Welcome to the first video of the new year. If you're new here, my name is Benji. If you've been here before, welcome back to the channel and welcome to a brand new video. So today is the annual desk setup tour, but this year I'm also adding a what's in my bag, mainly because there's only one person who's been asking me over and over again, and I was not gonna do it for one person, but I got to thinking that there is some tech slash things that I use that are in my bag that go with the things that I have on my desk that are for my workflow. So that's why I'm gonna, from now on, I'm gonna be doing a desk setup tour as well as a what's in my bag thing to be a trend. All right, so let's just get straight into it. The first thing that I'm gonna talk about is my brand new M2 MacBook Air. That is the center of my desk, which is the center of my workflow. I recently did a video on it, which for some reason, compared to my other videos, a lot of people saw, probably because of what it's about, but that video actually did really well and it, in a couple of days, it took the slot of my most popular video, which was pretty insane. So everyone who watched it, thank you. So I've owned this computer for about almost two months now and it's been amazing. You guys heard me praise it in my first video, which was kind of like my first impressions of it and it really impressed me a lot it's been amazing i have nothing bad to say about it like i really really like it after using windows all my life it did take some getting used to getting like used to mac os i've literally used windows for all my life so i've used windows for 22 years and this is my first ever switch to mac os and i love it i still keep a windows around i've always set on that opinion that you should always have a windows computer around you never know what you're gonna need it for so i still have my previous laptop um but my main laptop has now been the new macbook air and it's been great has not let me down next thing that works alongside with my macbook air is the brand new logitech mx master 3s i talked about this in my previous desk setup video last year that i, I wanted to upgrade to this mouse and i did this mouse has been on my wish list for a while because when I first saw it, the, the functionality of what you could do with it is absolutely amazing. And it blew me away of what you could do with it, especially for editing and for creators. I, I love it. And when I was looking at it, it was actually the MX Master 3. They came out with the MX Master 3S, which is like a refined version of it. And I absolutely love it. I'm not going to get too technical on like what it does, but it's amazing. It has gestures so you can, you don't lose the gestures that you have on a touchpad with the Mac to switch between windows. It has DPI settings, which is dot per inch, basically how far your mouse will move on depending on like the stroke of your hand which is great because you can set it to be different sensitivities per app so i have it more sensitive when i'm editing because i use two screens when i'm editing it has a side scroller which is amazing because i can scroll horizontally now like when i'm editing i can scroll side to side for the timeline which is super super useful i love it the mouse has been amazing and also it is really quiet compared to other mice even compared to my last mouse it's ridiculously quiet but yeah, that mouse has been great and it works in tangent with more of my Logitech products, which is with my keyboard. I have the Logitech MX Keys Mini. I had that last year. I'm still using it. It's been amazing. It's been great and it's backlit. I can use it at night, during the day. The battery life is great. Don't have any complaints about it. They did come out with the MX Keys Mechanical, which is super cool because if you like that mechanical keyboard feel, that tactile feeling when you're typing, they do have those also in a mini form factor, which I love, but I love the keyboard that I chose and has not let me down. For headphones, I use my Sony MDRV6s. Those are my old faithfuls. They've always worked for me really, really well. I love them. I use them for pretty much everything. I use them for media consumption. I use them for editing. They've never let me down. They've been great. I love those headphones. I've talked about in the past, especially my last desk setup video that I 
love those headphones. They've been a part of my life for a long time because my dad had a pair of those headphones when I was a kid. So I grew up on those headphones. But recently I got a new pair of headphones. I got the Sennheiser HD 660 headphones. Those things, oh my goodness, are amazing. I am not by no means an audiophile. I'm not. But I do appreciate good sounding audio more than the average person. I don't consider myself an audiophile. I'm not. I don't count towards that tier level, but I can appreciate good audio more than the average person. I have heard about the sound quality of not only this brand, but of this type of headphones, which are open back headphones. And oh my goodness, these sound amazing. Before I continue talking about them, I wanna say that these things were a gift to me. I was not planning to buy these or receive these at all. They were a gift from my uncle. I know he's watching this because he watches all of my videos. Tio Beto, thank you so much. You're amazing. To give you an idea of what open back headphones, well, what that is and what they mean, basically. Open backs, as you can see in the B-roll, they have no cover. So everything going on in your environment, you can hear straight through it. And anything you're listening to, someone else can hear it. It's like if you have a pair of AirPods Pros or the Maxes and you put them in transparency mode. The one that lets you hear everything else. It's like that. So you're probably thinking, why the heck would you want that? The benefit of open back headphones is the wide range of sound. The sound stage, as what it's called. Sound stage is basically how deep and how like 3D, how expanded the sound is. And you get a deep, rich sound with those headphones. I use them to edit. I only use them to edit. That is not meant for media consumption, for watching movies, listening to music. That is meant for editors. Of course, I only edit with them when it's quiet. I'm in my room alone and there's nothing else going on, nothing else distracting me. That's when I use them. The moment that the house is busy or there's someone in my room and there's noise going on, I switch to my Sony's because those are closed back. But the sound quality is insane. Like the average person won't really notice the difference between my Sony's and those, but man, they sound incredible. I have been editing with them ever since. Of course, well, the room is quiet, but they absolutely blew me away. And I don't think I'll ever go back to another pair of headphones. Besides my Sony's, I trust these so much because they literally are that good. So the next thing in my desk is these posters. This one, and there's one over here that I'm gonna put B-roll for because you can't really see it from this angle. These are metal posters, magnetic posters. These are from a company called Displate and they are amazing. You can find artwork on their website about pretty much anything, any hobby you might have, and you're probably gonna find a poster on it. And mounting them is super, super, super easy because all you need to do is stink a magnet on the wall and then you mount the piece of metal onto the magnet and that's it. Try to find a smooth wall because if not, it's not gonna stick well and it probably will fall, but when you do, you find a good safe spot for it. These things look incredible. And since they're not mounted by any nails or something, they are snug right up against the wall. There's barely any gap or there is no gap at all. What do you mean barely? There's no gap and they look amazing. I have currently one, two, three, three posters. <laughs> I have, wait, three, four. I lied. I have four posters. Two are mine, two are my brothers. I have one on top of my bed, which is right in front of me. I have this one. This is my brother's and then I have another one on basically at the entrance of my room, which is also my brother's. They really help you fix the vibe of your room that you're going for. They have anything from abstract and wild to really dark and minimalistic if you're into that kind of stuff. I also have an Amazon dot. i um, not going to say it because I changed the wake word from to I'm also not gonna say the other one in case someone has one, I don't wanna wake it up. And to your left, my right, again, from last year, a Washness Media calendar. I love these calendars. I don't know why, I haven't found another calendar with pictures of cars that good. Like, they're amazing. So, continuing the trend from 2022, I bought the 2023 edition, amazing. Can't go wrong with it. I love that calendar so much, and I look forward to every new month seeing the brand new picture on that calendar. And now, going on with the items that are in my bag, starting with the Logitech MX carrying case. This little thing, I didn't think I was gonna use it so much, but it's amazing. It was a free gift when you bought the MX Master 3S on Logitech's website. It's a felt little pouch 
for you to put your charging cable for the mouse plus the mouse itself. I do travel with the mouse. I do put it in my book bag when I'm gonna go out and use the computer somewhere else. So that is super useful to not have to just throw it in my bag. I put it in there and then put the carrying case in my bag. So really, really useful. Of course, when I go out, my MacBook Air goes into my book bag. But what I keep in my book bag is a USB-C hub. I use that thing to read SD cards, USB A's, HDMI out, because the MacBook Air doesn't have an HDMI port, so that's what I'm using right now to display to my monitor. So I always keep the USB-C hub with me in case I need something that is not USB-C. I also keep USB-C cables with me at all times because I now have a lot of things that are USB-C. My mouse is USB-C, my gimbal, which I get to, is USB-C, my keyboard is USB-C, and the MacBook. If you want to charge it with USB-C instead of MagSafe, which is the magnetic charger that comes with it, you can do that too. So I have a lot of things that are USB-C now, so I keep a USB-C cable in my bag at all times. I also keep two hard drives. I keep a one terabyte SanDisk SSD and then a regular HDD hard drive, also of a terabyte, in my bag. My regular hard drive has anything previous, like from my previous years on it. So from 2022, I think up until 2020 is what I have on that hard drive. And then my current stuff, my current projects and music that I'm going to use for the future, all of this other stuff lives on my SSD and I work off my SSD because it is super, super fast. The read and write speed of that is absolutely amazing. So I do work off that and it's fast enough, more than fast enough for my workflow where I can just keep it plugged in and not take up my storage on the built-in hard drive of my computer. Also in my bag is a Rocketbook notebook, the Fusion. It is an erasable notebook and a reusable notebook that you can scan your writings and upload it to any cloud service or local hard drives that you might have. It's erasable with water. You, I just spray a little bit of water on the page and with the included microfiber, you'll wipe it off. It's like it never happened. It's also erasable. The little pen has a little gel tip at the end that you can erase to erase mistakes. It's really, really cool. And it's my only notebook that I've had for a couple years now. With the Rocketbook notebook, I also have a smudge guard for my hand because the way I write is kind of weird and you have to give it time for that ink to dry. Even when it is dry, I tend to smudge my hand over the writing and it just smears. So I have a smudge guard that I put on. So whenever my hand runs over it, it doesn't smear. I also have my Moment 58 millimeter iPhone lens, which I used haven't used in a while actually. The last time I used it was for my first short film to get really, really close up shots of like my brother's face and stuff like that. I actually used that lens for the good first half of filming for that short film, but I'll find something to use it again. It's a really cool lens and I, it's really useful. I also have my cinematic lens that I call it, my anamorphic lens. Um, I use that for my cinematic videos obviously. And because as I explained in a previous video, it has that blue flare across the, the lens. So when the light hits it, you get those cool sci-fi looking blue streaks across the screen. I really like that lens, it's super cool. And of course I keep my gimbal in there and that gimbal never leaves my bag. You never know, you never know when you're gonna wanna start filming something. So I keep my gimbal in there. It is the DJI ON4 gimbal. It's been great, has not let me down get super smooth shots with it. It's been super, super awesome. I used it for a lot of the B-roll for this video. So it's been really, really great. And to work in tangent with the gimbal, I also have the moment counterweights. I mentioned this in a previous video, but you can't attach anything to your phone while it's on the gimbal because then it gets off balance. So that's what the counterweights are for. When I attach my anamorphic lens, the cinematic lens, I have to use counterweights to balance out the weight. So the weight won't shift too much to one side. You add these little counterweights and you're good to go. You can use the gimbal with the lens attached. And then of course, I also have my iPhone XR. That's what I use to film my serious videos, my cinematic videos, because it goes all the way up to 4K 60 frames per second, so I can do slow-mo, and it's been great. There's only one thing that I don't like about my iPhone XR, and it's not just my iPhone XR specifically. It's basically any old phone that still has 64 gigabytes, and you tend to store stuff on your phone. I'm sure that Apple does this on purpose. All your storage is filled up, with random useless data and Apple won't tell you what that data is for and you can't clear that. The only way to do that is to wipe your phone and to reinstall everything again, which I'm not gonna do. That's why my little iPhone SE for talkie videos like this, I use it because I wiped it completely and it has full 64 gigs dedicated to just that and it still does 4K, which is perfect 
for this style of video where there's not much going on. The good thing that for cinematic videos, it's just little clips at a time, but it does fill up quick. That's Apple special and they like to charge more money for no reason. So that's pretty much it for this video. I look forward to doing this video every year. I like keeping this series, I guess, up to date every year of what's changed, things in my workflow that might have changed, and now that I'm including the what's in my bag, it's, it's a little more fun now. So thank you guys so much for watching. I look forward to this year. I think it's gonna be a good year for videos, um, especially now that I have a lot of new stuff that makes my workflow a little easier. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next one, and as always, stay safe, God bless, I'll see you later.